forming cells. An early step in creating life would be the formation of a membrane to enclose a small volume of water and chemicals in a cell. Life requires each organism to have an inside and an outside. A cell membrane is needed so that metabolic reactions occur within a confined space, where energy and materials could be used to build more complicated structures. How could those membranes form before life? Oil and water don't mix. Why not? Why is this important in the evolution of life? Oils, fats, and waxes are all lipids. The common name for lipids is Some fat molecules found in living things have an interesting property. One end is attracted to water and the other end is not. Many texts state that the other end repels water, but that is not the whole story. Phospholipids and fatty acids each have a polar end and a nonpolar end. Polar molecules are attracted to each other and, since water is a polar molecule, the fat molecules form hydrogen bonds between their polar ends and the water molecules. The polar end is then called hydrophilic as it is attracted to the water molecules. The nonpolar end, now called hydrophobic, is not attracted to the water. However, it is not repelled by the water. The hydrophobic end is just pushed out of the way of the water molecules as the hydrophilic end seeks to bond with the water. When fatty acids or phospholipids are placed in water, they move so that the hydrophilic end is in the water and the hydrophobic end is pushed away from the water. The result is to naturally form a membrane without the need for life directing their motion. Click for an animation of phospholipid membranes. The diagram shows the hydrophobic tail being repelled by water to illustrate how many resources describe it, but it's good to know what is really occurring. Oil molecules are only hydrophobic. They don't have a hydrophilic end. The oil molecules are not attracted to the water or to each other. As the water molecules bond together, the oil is pushed out of the way. Since oil is less dense than water, the water molecules move to the bottom, leaving the oil on top. And that's why oil and water don't mix. And oil does not form membranes like fatty acids and phospholipids. Click here for an animation of phospholipid bilayer formation. The result is the natural formation of primitive cells. Chemical reactions and processes can occur within the cell walls as the required molecules are kept close to each other. Here we have the RNA, membrane, enclosed RNA, and the lipid membrane. The first cells probably used fatty acids, which form naturally near sources of hot water, such as geysers or hydrothermal vents. Modern cells make their membranes out of phospholipids. Within the enclosed environment of cells, the processes of chemistry would create even more complex structures belonging to all four classes of organic molecules, proteins, lipids, carbohydrates, and nucleic acids. Cells respond to their environment, reproduce, evolve, interact with other cells, and obtain and use energy to live and to grow. These are the characteristics of all living things. Cells support metabolism and evolution. The chemical reactions in these cells would eventually create sugars and then ribonucleic acid, or RNA. RNA is capable of enabling key functions of life replication, which is making identical copies of itself, energy storage for chemical reactions, and catalysis, dramatically speeding up favored chemical reactions. Once these three functions were developed, evolution accelerated. In more advanced biological systems, RNA's functions have been taken over by more specific chemical processes. For replication, DNA is more effective at storage of genetic information. For energy storage, ATP now stores energy in our cells. And for catalysis, proteins now catalyze reactions. RNA's role as the predecessor of these has only recently been discovered. 